First of all, it's not Jimmy's fault. No? No. Jimmy is an addict, sir. What's he addicted to? Himself. <laughs> no, I, it's not funny, sir. As a matter of fact, it's a fucking tragedy is what it is. The guy, he has come to believe that he is always the smartest fuck in the room. And you know what? It's not his fault. Because, uh, let's face it, he's not going to Johns Hopkins or joining Mensa. He's taking a fucking job with the Balmer Police Department. His first two years in homicide, he's in Umansky squad, partnered with Tony Lamartino. <laughs> Christ. It must have been months, even. He was the smartest fuck in the fucking room. What's your point, Jay? My point is, he can't help it. It makes him an asshole. I know, but... It's also what makes him good police. Last year, he gives me eight clearances. One of them was a decomp floater who was John Doe for three weeks. Tell your boy to wrap up that bullshit detail in two weeks. He does that, he comes home. Clean slate. Every now and then we visit the projects, they live there. Hmm. Your man's D, right? D'Angelo, yeah. This one's got a D as a possible shooter. This one connects. That way. Yeah. I'm seeing it. College girl blown up in the kitchen of an apartment up in Northeast. So how does this match with all the rest of the West Side Project mopes? They don't have cars? This doesn't match, Jay. Sure it does. Take a look at your office report. You got a witness, puts her with a D the night she's aced. How many Ds do you think there are in the system, Jay? As a street name? <laughs> Let me ask you something, Jimmy. How many uh, case files you got here that you put in Barksdale? Mm, maybe a dozen dozen cases. So how many of those are from our squad? One. Gerard Bogue. One case? Your squad's down a man for weeks, Jimmy. We're gonna be humping your calls, catching your cases, you know, hopping around like a one-legged pig town whore on check day. And for what? So that you can have your big adventure and solve everybody else's cases? Is this what I'm hearing? He's got you, Jimmy. Where's the love, McNulty? Show me some fucking love. All right. Atta boy. He's my son. <laughs> Will you explain to me again why I'm about to rework a six-month-old crime scene? Well, look at this narrow-ass file. Keeley didn't do shit on this. He did the scene, though. What's Keeley we're talking about? Fucking Jay and his leaps of logic. This case is nowhere near anything we're doing. So? Give it a shake or two anyhow. Make a sergeant happy. This is the one, huh? Yep. Hasn't been rented since. Fuck. Hey, McNulty, there's something here that needs kissing. <laughs> I guess you know now why I wear the stripes in the family. Well, good call, Jay. 
May I ask you a question that is essential to your career? What? Who do you serve? I am asking you to identify for the record your commanding officer. Major Rawls. Excellent. Now, with that thought in mind, I advise you to go immediately into the Major's office carrying the break I'd given you in the Crescent case and kiss the man's ring. Because, Jimmy, I have talked you right out of this shithouse. Yeah? Here's the deal. You wrap up this thing with narcotics in two weeks. You put yourself back in the rotation when we go back to night work. You do that, and you're back in the fold. Thanks, Jay. No problem. Right now, whoever did our girl also did Boyd and Leggett a month earlier. Leggett. And those two are definitely straight up drug executions. No mention of DNA in the file. But I did get a fresh number on Tawanda. Who? You know, the girl who called in on Crescent. All right, she put D in for that. Have you seen this? Hey, Jay Bird. And the bear said, you didn't really come here to hunt now, did you? <laughs> you see Saturday's 24th? Uh, Sunday morning. You see the one Warden got in the west side? John Bailey in a Kevlar vest, lit up by three separate shooters. Uh, Carey Street, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you made the connection with Crescent. You didn't think Bailey might tie in with the Barksdale crew? The warden's on the other shift. I'm trying to work my murders. Jesus Christ. Tony, line three. What the hell? Call for backup? Not yet. Let's see how it plays out. That's nice. I'll check them out. I'll watch the boys. Afternoon, gentlemen. Saying if he's going to use that, you'd have been done using it by now. Barksdale. Nah, he ain't no problem. I don't know. Avon's been chalking up a lot of bodies, you being you. I just can't really come out and help y'all. You know what I mean? Snitching just rubs me wrong. Personally, I don't think the game is played like that. You know, I used to work the homes back when your brother was up there. You get a chance, let them know they blew up John Bailey last night. Good man. A lot of enemies. Mm hmm Saying you trying to catch up with Bird? Word is he dropped a working man. Hey, wait. Hold up. Come on, don't play me. What working man? What bird? Come on, now ain't but one working man now is there. Bird? I think your snitch can handle that. What the fuck can I tell him? Whatever the man wants to hear, Jimmy. Whatever he wants to hear. <laughs> Prodigal son. Major, we got a good shot to clear a couple of cases here. One thing... We're not here to talk cases, McNulty. I don't care about your cases. Sit. Relax. I'm a reasonable guy. In fact, everywhere I go, people say to me, Bill Rawls, you are a reasonable fucking guy. Am I right, Jay? You are reasonable, sir. Yes. Yes, I am. And because your sergeant knows me to be reasonable, he came in here a couple of weeks ago and reasoned with me, right, Jay? Uh, we reasoned. Uh, we did. We reasoned that despite his negligible Irish ancestry and a propensity to talk out of turn, Jimmy McNulty is a good worker. Probably worth saving. Major, I'm not... He's a good-looking kid, huh? <laughs> do you know what we do here, McNulty? What we do here? <laughs> That was one of them, uh, what do you call it? It's a question you don't really have to... A uh, rhetorical question. You were being rhetorical. Rhetorical and reasonable, sir. We work murder cases here, detective. We work them as they come in, one at a fucking time. It's called the rotation. You're up till you catch one. When you catch one, you step down, you work it for a while, someone else steps up. It's a simple but effective way to do business in a town that has 250 to 300 cases a year. Yes, sir. 
But if someone gets it into his head to leave the rotation, it puts an unfair burden on the other detectives who have to pick up their casework. Overworked cops make mistakes. Mistakes lower the unit-wide clearance rate. And that can make someone who is uh, otherwise as reasonable as me... Unreasonable. <laughs> Detective McNulty, I expect to see your ass back here next week when your uh, shift rotates to night work. 